Finding the right tree for the right space is very important. If you're putting a, a dwarfing rootstock and wanting to grow a big tree, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, it's naturally dwarfing and will only grow to a couple of metres in height. If you've got a big garden and you want a big tree, likewise the dwarfing rootstock would be completely the wrong tree to put into that area. You would need a vigorous rootstock so the tree can mature and perform at its best. The best time of the year to start your planning any autumn, spring planting would be around July, August time. Um, that's the time when we have the, the largest selection of our trees available in all the different sizes on the different rootstocks. When you get to the spring time, we might be sold out of some of our most popular lines. Selecting the right variety is obviously very important. Key factors to consider is, is what do you actually want to do with the fruit? Do you want to cook with it? Do you want to eat it straight off the tree? Would you like to store it till Christmas, after Christmas time? The shape of the tree is very important that you would select. If you wanted to plant it against a wall or a fence, then you'd need to be choosing the espalier or fan train shape. If it's a bush shaped tree, that you want, that freestanding in your garden, then it's either a one-year-old maiden that you can train into a bush-shaped tree or already a two-year-old tree that has already been trained into that shape. If you were wanting to put trees close together, then select the cordon fruit trees as these can be planted as close as two feet apart. The rootstocks can be very confusing. They're, they're numbered and they're not numbered in any logical sense that anyone would understand that a low number is a dwarfing rootstock and a high number is a, a vigorous rootstock. Um, so it's a, a good idea to check on our website where we do have a guide that will show you the rootstock and the eventual height that the tree will grow to. Well, pollination again is another quite complex subject and, and one that maybe people look into too much. Um, if you're in an urban situation with lots of other fruit trees in neighbouring gardens, it really doesn't come into consideration because the bees are very generous with their visits. Um, they'll, they'll travel from garden to garden, from tree to tree, so you'll get the cross-pollination there. If you're in a very rural situation and there's no other neighbouring fruit trees, then what you would need to do is select two trees that will cross-pollinate each other. On our website we have the pollination groups of each variety and you would need to select a tree within the same pollination group or the adjoining pollination group. Fruit trees don't require full sun to perform at their best but they do require some sun. Um, so as long as you're not planting a fruit tree in a completely shaded area where the fruit isn't going to ripen, colour up and mature properly, um, sort of any area within the garden that gets half a day's sunlight is a perfect situation. To protect your fruit from the birds, and this is mainly the case with soft fruits, the birds are very keen on blueberries, red currants, gooseberries. You will need to either cover the plant with a net to keep the birds out, or a fruit cage is, is the ideal situation.